This week's video is going to be about graduate entry medicine. In this video, I'm going to cover the types of courses that you can apply to as a graduate and the funding that is available to you. This is going to be the first of two part series, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and turn the bell on so you know when I'm going to release that next video. Make sure you watch the video right to the end because I will be divulging some tips from current graduates. welcome questions from people who are applying to medicine or who are interested in the medical career or interested in general practice and recently on Instagram I've had a few people ask me about graduate entry medicine so although I didn't apply as a graduate to medical school I did obviously study with many graduates and spoke to them and spent a lot of time with them throughout my medical degree and I've also spoken to graduates and worked with them through a number of different ventures so this video is going to be responding to the questions that I was asked on Instagram and also I've seen more information on the internet and just in general really for people who are applying straight from school like myself um, and less for more mature applicants or people who have considered medicine later on in life. So I've done some research online and I've spoken to some graduates and I've compiled a list of resources as well which you can read for more information and I have provided those links in the description box below. There are two main courses that you can apply to as a graduate. The first is an accelerated or fast track course which is four years. Then you have the standard undergraduate course which is five years. When you're applying to university there are going to be a number of factors to consider. Some include entry requirements, so we can categorise that into academic and non-academic requirements. So academic will be things like your qualifications and your A-levels, potentially your GCSEs as well. Also entrance exams, the UCAT, the BMAT and the GAMSAT. And then we can look at non-academic requirements. So that would be things like work experience and extracurricular activities. You also want to think about the number of places on the courses. You also want to think about how you're going to afford the course, what are the fees like, are you entitled to any funding, any support, would you have to work? And then the types of course, so for instance, is that problem-based learning, is that traditional, is that integrated? Another key thing would obviously be location. Would you have to move or would you be able to commute? And if so, what are the costs associated? Now, of course, the best chance you'll have is doing well in all aspects of your application. But I want you to understand that the universities are going to look at your application as a whole. So there are many candidates who have done exceptionally well in all parts of the application and who have not got into medical school. Now, GEM or graduate entry medicine is much more competitive than the um, standard medical course. You may have had more time to get the appropriate work experience and understand more about a medical career. In addition, you may have also had that extra time to demonstrate your understanding and suitability to a medical degree. But in general, you would need 2-1 at minimum, good to excellent references. You may even have to show how you will fund your degree. And speaking to a current graduate, they have told me that you may even need a guarantor. They've also said that you may have to sign a document to show how you will fund your studies. Now, of course, you're going to need the appropriate skills and qualities in order to become a doctor. For example, doctors are good communicators, especially GPs have to be excellent communicators. You have to have compassion, empathy, patience, and you have to also be dedicated and diligent. And of course, it's imperative to understand medicine as a career, the challenges that you may face and how you will overcome those challenges. And also the degree programme, especially if you're undertaking the accelerated course, it's much more intense. And so you're going to have to show how you're going to be able to cope with that. Some universities also require a science degree and even science A-levels. Examples of the universities are the University of Birmingham, King's College London or KCL and Oxford. Now with the University of Birmingham, you can't apply in the final year of your degree. You have to have graduated for you to be able to apply. And there are some universities who don't have a specific degree subject 
that they require from you. So it could be any degree, um, it could be obviously a non-science degree, humanities. And some of the universities that don't require a science degree would be Queen Mary University London, Newcastle and Cambridge. However, they may still require science A-levels. Usually this is chemistry and one other science, um, and this could also include maths. Now there are some universities like Cardiff and Dundee who have a pre-medical course for non-science graduates. So now we're going to talk about funding. Before I get into funding, I think it's appropriate to discuss some key terms. A bursary is defined as a non-repayable sum of money that universities can award to their students to incentivize and support their studies. Another definition of a bursary would be money with more narrow criteria. Example, money put aside for students from lower income backgrounds or money for specific expenses such as childcare. Now, bursaries may be awarded on a first come first serve basis so just to be aware of that. Now we have grants and grants are awarded to people who satisfy the criteria and it may be means tested so this is based on your income. There are some charities and businesses who can provide grants so scholarships are mainly for those who are high achievers but there are many scholarships that are aimed at people based on their gender or even the course that they're on. I'm going to put a link to the definitions and where I got them from in the description box below. Okay, so let's talk about the two types of courses and the funding. So for the accelerated four year course, there is funding available to you. However, the course is partially funded. So in the first year, you'll have to pay the first 3,465 and then Student Finance England will make up the difference to a maximum of 9,250. Now from years two to four, eligible students will receive uh, the NHS bursary and this is a total amount of 3,715. Now again, the shortfall will be met by Student Finance England. Now you're also entitled to a full maintenance loan in year one and then it's at a reduced rate from years two to four. Other types of support available to you would be means tested, so that's based on your income, NHS bursaries, and you can apply for these from year two, and also a non-means tested grant of a thousand pounds. I'm also going to link to the NHS Business Services Authority in the description box so you can look at that site for more information. And also just be aware that the figures I've quoted are the amounts at this current time, so it may change. If you apply to the undergraduate program as a graduate, unfortunately, there isn't the same amount of funding available. In fact, you're not entitled to any funding at all apart from a maintenance support. But of course, check your eligibility. Now, the maintenance support is a full income-based loan. So, information I've had from a current student is that you don't receive this loan until the university confirms you are enrolled on the course and you've paid your first instalment. Now, there is some help um, available to you from year five, if, of course, you're eligible, and this includes the following. Your tuition fees paid by the NHS, a means-tested NHS bursary, a reduced rate maintenance loan and a non-means tested grant of a thousand pounds. That's the two courses in a nutshell, but of course make sure you do your research because things are always changing. There are a few other things you might want to think about. So that might be living costs. Do you need to work for a few years before you apply as a graduate? Would you need to work to fund your degree once you're on the program? And if so, what job would you have? And how many hours would you work? Because the medical degree in whatever form, whether that's accelerated or as a standard degree, is quite intense. You may find that there just isn't that amount of time for you to work. A current student who has worked to fund their uh, degree has said that you might need to work about 10 to 20 hours. But of course, this does depend on what job you're doing. There was a question I was asked on Instagram and it was about paying in instalments. So just speaking to a current student and having a look and do my own research, most universities will let you pay in instalments. So I've got some tips from a current student studying abroad in Malta at Queen Mary University. So she says that the bonus of applying as a graduate is that you can apply to both 
accelerated and undergraduate courses. She says that when you apply to undergraduate medicine, there are more spaces for graduates and that graduates tend to be favoured. Now, during my own research, I found a bit of conflicting information here. I found that actually graduates are compared against graduates. I think the bottom line here is you're going to be compared to a group of students and you obviously need to stand out and make sure your application is as good as it can be. Now, she recommends if feasible, it's best to apply to two undergraduate courses and two graduate accelerated courses. Now, I'm just going to read what she's given to me. So she says that some universities offer students in their final year the opportunity to have an interview and transfer onto their graduate medicine programs. So for example, at St. George's University, they offer students an interview if you can achieve an average of 67% at the end of the second year, which would enable you to transfer to the third year of medicine. And that's obviously as it stands at the moment, things could always change. She says that at Birmingham, they allow the people with the highest averages in the cohort to be entitled to interviews. However, with these transfer interviews, they only take about 15 to 20 students. So it is extremely competitive, but still an option. Now I have some tips from a UCL student. So this current student recommends, one, you do everything you would for any other medical application but really sell yourself and your skills. She says, utilize and reflect on all your experiences and relate it to medicine. It doesn't just have to be medicine related or medically related experience as other experiences can help you to be a better doctor. And I definitely second this. So she says, for example, being involved in clinical research or working as a lawyer or even in customer service. Of course, that actually demonstrates a lot of communication skills in the latter that or two she says how will they be useful to a career in medicine as a doctor and to the medical school she also says that if you include a quote or a uh, a book or a policy then mention how that will also help now her last tip is that you should show you are determined and motivated but also have a holistic or wholesome understanding and realistic understanding of medicine as a career path. Now, that is something that I can definitely second. Medicine can be quite a challenging career path. And if you look at some of my previous videos where I talk about my career, there was a time where actually I considered leaving medicine. So it's really important you understand how challenging, but yes, rewarding a career in medicine can be. Medicine is much more than stethoscopes and scrubs and face masks. There is a lot more to being a doctor. So that was a very short, summary of the types of courses that you can apply to and some of the support that is available to you. In the next video, I'm going to cover work experience, entrance exams, and more advice from students who are currently studying as graduates. So if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I'm always interested to hear your comments in the comment section below. If you're watching this video on your phone in landscape mode or on your desktop, you will see a subscribe button on the right side of your screen. So make sure you click it and subscribe and have a look at some of the other videos I have.